Um, I've been able to do the dance, but I still can't tell the genders. Uh, are there different tales for different varieties of corridors, or are they all very similar? Uh, there are there are different ones. You know, some of them wear the badge that says he, him, she. No, I'm kidding. No, no, no. Uh, but the the uh, the the let's see, the elegans. You know, so they're the elegans, which are now in the genus Gastrodermis. Um, so they often have different coloration between the males and females. So they're, they actually, uh, the pattern is somewhat different with, with the gastrodermis. So that's, that's one where you can, you can easily kind of tell males and females, um, with, um, the Aeneas types, which are now, um, osteogaster. So that's the, the genus osteogaster is, is the Aeneas types, uh, which is, I think, probably what they're referring to when they say albinos you know uh those is is usually no sexual dimorphism in, in color you know there's no color that's going to tell you and there's no fin differences other than the lower uh ventral fins so the ventral fins on the females are going to be slightly more rounded or basket shaped and the males are going to be slightly more pointed but the best way for me to to sex quarries is to make sure that they're well fed so you're if you're buying them from the store they may not necessarily be in the best condition right so you want to you want to give it a couple of weeks make sure that they're eating uh if you can get live foods in them you know that's really going to help you know of any kind really uh baby brine shrimp you know some daphne uh some black worms or tubifex worms that's great and then once you've once you've got them fed up you know and and healthier for a couple of weeks take them out of the tank and put them in something shallow so you can look directly down on the top if the widest if the widest part of the fish is near the gills, it's a male. If the widest part of the fish looking down on it from the top is about the middle of the dorsal, that's a female. So that's the best way really with, with Aeneas and with uh, like the, like panda, sturbi, those ones are now considered hoplosoma. That's the genus. So those, those two types, that's pretty much the best way to, to sex them that I've seen. Um, Pygmaeus histatus, the females are like one and a half times bigger than the males. So that's pretty easy. Uh, <laughs> so Barbatus, again, you're going to have color and, or I'm sorry, sclerostex, I should say. Uh, so Barbatus specifically, though, you're going to have color and fin differences that show you. So the Barbatus males are going to have longer dorsal fin. Sometimes other sclermistics have longer dorsal and pectoral fins. Um, so that's that's a big difference with those that that you could tell the males from the females. Usually with Barbatus, oddly enough, and, and some of the other sclermistics, uh, the males are can be longer or can be bigger, you know, which is odd because with most Cori Doradini fish or most Cori types, it's the other way around that the females are slightly longer, you know. Um, the hardest ones to sex are probably the Brocus. So uh, Brocus, and I mean that in the the old sense of the word, in you know the green guys, right, and in the new sense of the word. So the the new genus Brocus that they've just recently released also contains um, fish like, let me think, like Leopardus. That's that's considered a Brocus now. Um, Robustus, Pulker. Uh, so just to try to give you an idea of which species would be considered a Brocus now. But those are, oh, so Dallas, Agassizii, these are all Brocus. So they these are a taller bodied quarry type. And they don't fatten up almost like in the same way that the other, you know, the, the Aeneas types and then the Sturbi types, they don't fatten up in that way. Or if they do, you must have to be feeding them extreme, extreme amounts. You know? So uh, I, I have met one fish keeper who, you know, I'll, I'll try to be kind, you know, money is no object for him. So he, he is very, very, very wealthy, you know, and he, um, has staff that feed his quarries uh, wow. from a five-gallon bucket of live blackworms. Um, wow. So you can imagine how much that 
costs. You know? <laughs> so for for me, my price US right now for a quarter pound, which is a, a plastic bag about this wide and maybe this that much filled, you know, like a black room. So a quarter pound of black rooms is thirty five dollars. So you can imagine how much a five gallon bucket is of, of black rooms. Yeah. So yeah. I, now his I will say his brocus you could sex them by <laughs> looking from the top, but that's because they were, you know, gorging themselves all the time. You know, they were, you know, but for the most part, what I've seen is uh, the best, the best way to sex the brocus types is, is the lower ventral fins. So the basket fins. So in the brocus types, the males really have a significantly pointy uh, ventral rounded so that you know that enters into it as well but for your albinos i would say the best thing is feed them up you know make sure that you've got two weeks of good food in them and maybe some live foods if you can and then pull them out and the females are yeah as long as they're fully mature the females will be very very slightly longer than the males and the widest part of their body looking down from the top is going to be in the middle of the dorsal fin whereas the males the widest part of body of the body is going to be at about the gills the back of the gills so 